Welcome back to day two of our AMD profiling session. Uh, we will kick off with, looks like you're on deck, George, with introduction to OmniPerf. Yes, good morning. Uh, hello again. Uh, again, my name is George Makumanolis. Uh, I work in HPC Software Solutions team, and our role is to prepare applications for GPUs, profiling, porting, training, hackathons, many things. So today we'll talk about the uh, Omniperf and some uh, hierarchical roofline on the AMD the MI200. Um, however, I wanted to I did a slide uh, for Omniperf status and uh, acknowledgement, especially for uh, Cetonics, I would say. Um, because when we got access to Cetonics, uh, we observed that uh, it was not running on the Rockham 4, 4, 5.4.3, and had a problem to see what's going on. And Omniperf doesn't recognize that the ROCM 5.43 is a correct selection, uh, missing files. You have reported that, you have reported what should be done, I think, as first step. So we decided to use the 5.0.2, uh, as it seems to be working uh, ROCM installation, but had various issues. So, for example, the latest Omniperf requires ROCAM 5.1 at least. So we did cheat that with an environment variable ROCAM ver for Omniperf. And it is declared in the module, so you don't need to define it yourself. Now, the newest version of Omniperf requires hardware counters not yet declared in ROCAM 5.02. So we copied some XML files with counters from ROCAM 5.43 uh, and uh, make it and we did it omniperf script to use these files when calling rockprof so again to cheat that these counters exist in this rockm now the roofline binary this is binary requires rockm 5.1 and this check is integrated to the binary so there's no easy way to bypass so uh, i talked with omniperf developers and they did some tests that the roofline binary produced results decent results with rockm 502 and they gave us a new binary just for Cetonics and ROCAM 502. Uh, so I wanted to, so, to say that the, the power of open source and collaboration, because all of this happened in a few hours uh, and seems all worked out. Uh, we'll see for any problem today. And I want to thank uh, uh, Col Ramos, uh, Slash Carl, uh, Nicholas Kettis, and Keith uh, Lowery for discussing the issues and helping creating a new roofline binary. It was an effort that took a few hours. We didn't expect that this would happen, uh, but all helped to have something that's running on uh, Cetonics, and uh, we're happy for this. Now, uh, I will not go again to all of this. This is the RockProf, this is the Omnitrace, and now here we are in Omniperf. And Omniperf, I, now, there is something better and less better than Omnitrace. What's the better thing? You remember in Omnitrace, we had the configuration of file and you had to define what you want to do and what to activate, what to disable. Here, there's nothing. Here, you give your application and Omniperf starts running depending on some parameters. And, and it collects a lot of counters. It, uh, for example, the default behavior is to run, I think, 17 times your application. It will collect more than 100 counters and uh, it will present you the results. The difficult part is the results. So you will see speed of light, memory chart, uh, roof line, kernel comparison. But the thing is, we don't have yet guided analysis like some other uh, tools. Um, so we need to understand the results. And of course, it's, I would say, honestly, it's, it's impossible to understand all the results because we have a lot of data and depends on your application, which ones is important. Now, on visualization part, we have Grafana. So you can set up a Grafana server if you want to upload your data and do comparisons, etc. We have standalone GUI, which is um, a graphic interface that uh, you can create to uh, load it, and you go to browser and, and you load the web page. And we have the CLI. CLI is the output of some command, it's a text. And We'll discuss later about this. This is a memory chart that you can see all the layers, the reading, the write requests, and other stuff. But this is just one of the 
uh, pixels that we'll talk about. And here it is. So again, it's a research tool. It's available here, open source, so only perf. No part of Rockem stack. It's built of, on top of Rock Profiler. So as I said, again, it doesn't replace um, the Rock Profiler. Um, and integrated performance analyzer for MDGPUs, speed of light, roof line, memory chart, baseline comparison, subsystem performance analysis, um, local data cell memory, L1 data cache, cell 2 cache, HBM, shader so, compute, wavefront, instruction mix, like I uh, have FP32, 64, FP16, latencies. So there are plenty of things that they are not all easy to interpret and understand. So it needs more effort, but it's not required to understand everything, but the ones more related to your application. So OmniPerf will collect a lot of counters, will present some results, and it's up to us to understand and analyze. And of course, we hope that we'll have a guided analysis, but it's not yet ready. It supports MI200, MI100. Uh, the roof line is only for MI200. I would say the roof line is the most, one of the most easy things to understand from this uh, data. Uh, as I said, the user interface is Grafana, standalone GUI, and CLI. So if we go here, let's start from, from, from down, okay? Um, I have to repeat again that uh, in OmniPerf, you have to use one MPI process. So you cannot really use all the GCDs, okay? You will run in, in one GCD. And you use the rock profiler of what's used the counters. So every time the application runs, the rock prof takes different counters. And we run micro benchmarks that calculated the peak performance of the specific GPU. So the, the roof line is not theoretical peaks, it's empirical, it's what is calculated from micro benchmarks. The HBM, the computation will be all are accurate from micro benchmark. And that's why if you do two different GPUs, it could be a tiny, a tiny variation, right? Uh, so that's why to mention, um, uh, yeah, I will mention later. So there's a CSV now on suite, and uh, depends what you do, CLI, go standalone analyzer, and this one will be a text table. And this one is a, f I mean, there is a memory chart, but this is more, I would say more in the, in the future. Uh, or standalone GUI, you can see that. Uh, and th there's an effort to see that from CLI, but this is still really, really early. And there's a GUI. Um, so you can have a Grafana, which have a database, and you can import the workloads, okay? Different workloads. Um, okay, what I like in Grafana is that, uh, first of all, I don't know any, any HPC site that has Grafana for the users. Uh, so imagine that uh, your group Okay, I don't know, in a university, you do a lot of Omniperf and you build a Grafana for your team, okay? It's not a Grafana for all POSI, for example. This is a, it's not ideal, it will be a lot of <laughs> big databases. Um, so you analyze your application there and you can load it, the, your data, your profiling data many times in the database. So you say, I optimize something, and let's compare next to each other, what's the differences? And this is really, really nice. And also the visualization, I would say it's more fancy. You have more colors, etc. You have the roof line here, tables with data, etc. Um, however, uh, it's not everything perfect, right? Because you need a server. And uh, I will show you a case that um, if you have a lot, a lot, a lot of data, uh, Grafana is not perfect. Uh, or basically, you have to do some different analysis to integrate with uh, Grafana. Now, uh, all the futures, uh, I wrote here, most of them or all of them, um, MI200 support, MI100 support, standalone GUI, uh, uh, the Grafana use Mongo, uh, DB, a database, uh, you can do dispatch filtering, kernel filtering, GPU ID filtering, I, I use uh, GPU number four, um, the baseline comparison is with Grafana, you can compare, uh, I run this application non-optimized and then optimize and you can do the comparisons and you can normalize on many, many, many things. Uh, by default, the normalization of many counters is per wavefront. And this is uh, strange, we have requested to change to per kernel. 
and I think this is something that's happening. Um, system info panel, you can see the information of the system. Uh, speed of light, that's, that's known, is about some metrics, what they achieve compared to the peak performance. About kernel, the memory chart analysis. Um, now, um, the roofline analysis panel is supported on MI100 only. And uh, here is this correction, there's a, a slash SP3 and SP4 now, and our Red Hat. Um, there is a command processor. Command processor is about um, uh, how to say, uh, one heap send the request uh, to HSA, then the HSA starts taking, uh, taking the information, and here is information. Here's about how to distribute it in shaders, uh, the workload, uh, wavefront information, compute unit, distraction, mix panel, uh, like uh, FP3216, um, pipeline panel, LDS, uh, some uh, L1 data cache, L2 cache, etc. So there are plenty, plenty of data. Some of them uh, are visualized only from uh, Grafana. Uh, so Grafana has the most, I would say, visualization of futures. Um, but uh, personally, I, I, don't, I, I didn't use so much Grafana, and I will explain later uh, why. Um, so that's in a short introduction. OmniPerf is an integrated performance analyzer for MDGPUs built on Rock Profiler. Execute the codes many times to collect hardware counters. Over 100 counters uh, is the default behavior. Uh, yeah, using specific filtering options, uh, the overhead of profiling can be reduced. Um, roofline analysis again is supported on EMA 200, and OmniPerf shows many panels of metrics based on hardware counters. Um, typical OmniPerf uh, prof uh, workflow is a uh, I profile, I analyze with CLI or visualize with standalone GUI, or profile an important database and visualize with Grafana. And OmniPerf targets MI100 and MI200 and future generations, and it requires just one API process. I'm saying that because it happened to me some codes to a more, um, let's say, workflow code to demand three API processes. Uh, we couldn't really use the OmniPerf. Um, and this restriction is based on the, uh, that we use the, the rock prof with many counters and we have many, many iterations and doesn't support uh, the distributed stuff uh, at least yet. Um, again, for problems, you create an issue here. So as it's the research tools, both of them, OmniPerf and OmniPerf, support to create an issue on GitHub and the developers will see it and will try to accommodate your uh, request. Now, again, installation. It's really simple, uh, no root. Uh, this is the previous version. I downloaded the binary from, uh, I go to releases here. I download the binary. I enter the binary. I start with Python, some dependencies. If there's a, any error, I change, uh, according to the error, the version of, uh, uh, like the uh, NumPI, I want this version, etc. It's not a big problem. Uh, enter, make build, enter, uh, export the Python path, to where you store the Python dependencies, and then install with CMake, where I want to install it, where's the Python, where will be the module files, and make it style. So no root access, nothing required, you just compile it, and again, it's, it's extremely easy. Uh, just to mention something, uh, of course here, uh, I don't have it uh, here, you have to load the module for OCAM, right? You have to load the module of Rockem to find it. But on your laptop, I, because it will do something, um, you, when, you, when you do standalone GUI, I, there, there are some, some approaches. Uh, one approach is I download my profiling data, I run OmniPerf on my laptop, and the OmniPerf on my laptop is, also, is only analyze, doesn't need Rockem, so you need to do these this, this, this steps without Rockem and you have the, the appropriate commands and tools to do standalone GUI from your laptop and go to your browser and see the stuff. Um, what I didn't know, because on the system, uh, and so I hope someone from uh, technical from POS is here, you can do SSS uh, tunnel and avoid to download the data, but I'm not sure if it's allowed, so because I tried something, but I had um, uh, some uh, <laughs> refuse connection, so um, this is something to discuss with Posi, I would say. 
Now, omnipath uh, uh, modes. Um, target application is launched using the AMD uh, Rock Profiler. Um, and you can profile kernels, dispatches, IP blocks. IP blocks is, is, a, is a, I would say, a bad name. Uh, uh, it's about uh, the components of the GPU, uh, but in reality, in Omniperf means the blocks of the counter. So we'll see in the output uh, tables of the counters, each table is, co is called a specific name of IP block. So this, well, this is a, in architectural design, is a component of a part and uh, part of the GPU, but I told them that this name is not the best to my understanding. And um, after you profile, you do analyze. Um, and usually we'll do it with all the CLI. Uh, you have uh, immediately access to the metrics and lightweight standalone GUI. Uh, and we'll discuss about the, the word lightweight quite later. Database, if you have database, profiling data is important to Grafana database. So there's a command and uh, I will not have a lot of details, but you can say from uh, your, uh, I, I hope I hope it works from Pose, I don't know. Um, Importing database that is in, in a host, in a host somewhere far away, and you put username, password, and start importing the data. Uh, Grafana GUI is based on MongoDB and interact with save workload database. That, that, that's the important thing, that you can interact with the previous data. So here, there is no previous data. It's what you load at that moment. Here, you can have all your results gathered and you just you can load it easily and nice. Now, uh, how is the basic syntax, okay? Uh, Omni, the profile for profiling. Omniperf profile does n workload name the workload name is whatever you want i want to remember the run so it's like uh, i have i run hpl underscore optimization x whatever so this is a name that you would like to remember what is this workload profile options if you want roofline options does does you remember omnitrace also had does does and your application right binary and arguments so this is easy to remember this, the last ones, because it's all from Omnitrace. And here we have Omniperf space profile, Omniperf space analyze to analyze, okay? And here database. So again, the workload name is a name that you define, don't worry about this. And when you define a name here, it, it will create, uh, uh, this was a typo here, I will create in the in the directory workloads. You will create the workload name and slash mi200. You will find the standard you run on mi200. So when here here say analyze where, what we do omniperf analyze does p what the path to workloads slash workload name slash mi200. And if I do like that, then I will take, a, I have to redirect to an output file because I will take a lot of output, tables with counters, etc. Or to use a lightweight standalone uh, uh, GUI, I do the above command plus dash dash GUI. And this will start a, something like a web server, it's not exactly, and it will tell you go to this link and load it to, to your Chrome. So that's why I said you, if you download it, the workloads workload name in your laptop and you run this command to your laptop you can go to your browser and, and go to the, to the link if you're on posse i i don't want to give any advice because the the people from posse can give you advice if they want it or not to do these things on uh, on, the, on the system um database uh omniperf database interaction type connection options i'm not talking about this here so much and to see the options, Omniperf profile help, okay, or Omniperf analyze help, etc. You will see a lot of information. So here I had an example. Uh, basically, this is an example to have a vector copy, okay. So basically, this is a vector operation. Uh, I had to change that. This is HPCC, but uh, you do dust dust offload arc gfx and you compile it 
and I do this. Um, uh, of course, here is S run, right? Uh, obviously, here you are under S unlock, probably, etc. Uh, Omni per profile does send, and I give it a random name, whatever I want, does does the, the binary and arguments. And this will start executing uh, many, many, many times. And specifically, this around 17 times. And, I, and I'm saying that because you have to be careful uh, what, uh, how long is your application, because you have to wait a long time, you have the, your job scheduler to have enough time to finish and all of this information as you understand. Uh, so you have to consider it uh, in advance the preparation. And of course, if you want to do that. Um, now, uh, <clears throat> uh, I'll, I'll tell you later about the roof line option. There is a roof line that does only roof line and does four iterations only, only four. However, it doesn't do only the, it doesn't do memory analysis. So maybe has some interesting, not maybe, there's some interesting data to do the whole execution. Now, if you're wondering about the timing, uh, for example, roofline, we do four executions, three with counters, one without counters, and we take the timing from the non-counters execution to be closer to the realistic, to the more real execution time. Now, I had created this workflow, um, Omniperf profile, okay, I'll do profile, and I'm saying, do you have access to Grafana server? Okay, then Omniperf import to database, etc. And then load Grafana page, visualize and analyze. Now, if you want only CLI, you do Omniperf analyze, you redirect the output to a text, and you open the text and you, and you read the, the tables and the counters and everything. I want to go in, but I have no access to Grafana server, uh, download data only analyze with a standalone GUI. So you, you copy the data to your laptop and you load the, the, the browser. Uh, the browser. And I say here there's an option to use this forward and not download data, but I let that uh, to be considered from other people. So, uh, and when I, I, I asked before, I said that the vector copy, I compile, I run all of them. A new directory will be created called workloads v copy all because of this. And I do this omnipath analyze. I'm already in the same directory with the workloads v copy all MI200 and I redirect to a txt file that I want to name it as I want. And then you will take a lot of data. This is this is nothing compared to the real one. You take the top 10 kernels. Uh, this code has only one kernel. Okay. So the, the kernel name, the count, the sum, mean, me, uh, medians, percentage, etc. Speed of light. And this is quite interesting. Um, flops. What's the, the performance of the peak? 0%. Because vector copy doesn't have flops, really. Okay, the value is 0, while the peak is this one. Okay, and here is the unit. So you want to read the line. So this one is called IP block. Number two, this one is IP block 7.1. And you can see the flops, you can see the other operations, uh, the different, different uh, data type, uh, active compute units is 58, while 110 is the maximum, and I occupy 52, 53% of the compute units. So you can start seeing information like, oh, okay, maybe I don't occupy enough compute units. And here it tells me that I don't but depends on the code to know how important it is or not, right? Usually it is important, but depends what you are doing also. Uh, or uh, VLU utilization is less than 6% of the peak, for example. So you can start seeing information, a lot of information basically, uh, about the speed of light. Or here is a statistic of, of the wavefront uh, land statistics, right? Um, what's the grid size you have, okay? What's the, the workgroup size? The total wavefronts, okay, and um, uh, registers, information, vectors, colors, LDS allocation, scratch allocation, and you see the metrics depends on what what you look is different the metric. So what I show you here is uh, to understand. I think the total 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 uh, information is around 800 lines, 700 800 lines of tables 
with information. That's why I'm telling you uh, the output from OmniPerf can be a bit um, a lot to take in. Okay, that's why it's better to go to focus to specific metrics that you know or you expect uh, because you don't need to know all of them because some of the, it's, it's quite a lot. Just to mention, uh, there is an effort we write um, manual, if I can call it manual, about the counters. Uh, but this moment is not finished, first of all, and it's really, really early process, so I cannot uh, discuss a lot. Um, now, I want to tell you something. Uh, I go back a bit. If this is a really huge application, for if they're only uh, here, you you, uh, you can you have top top ten kernels here, okay, normally. Uh, but the hard case is that uh, you call also a lot of other kernels. You will see a lot of information at the end of the at the end of the file. Uh, after the seven eight hundred lines, you will see all the cores of the kernels. So this can take a lot, a lot, a lot of time. In order to avoid take a time, you can do this. I want to analyze the same one, but B0. What's B0? B0 is the top kernels. So with B0, I'll take as output only the top kernels and nothing else, which means the execution of analyze time is much less than B0. Also to mention something else, to important when you have especially big workloads. If you do this, this will work because this is, this is not running, it's analyzing. So it doesn't need a SRAN, but you will occupy uh, uh, login node resources. If you don't have an SR log, you will, so you're going to do this on login node. And if this is big data, you can occupy a lot of resources. That's why in any case, reserve um, one GPU, let's say, uh, basically you don't even need GPU, but that's even, yeah. And do SRAN does N1 to occupy a computer node and don't bother other users on login node, right? Now, if it's really small, you can do it on the login node, it will take seconds and nobody will understand anything that happened. As you see here, um, in, a, in the wavefront that I had before, I have the total wavefronts is index 7.1.2. This is the number of the IP block, and I can say it does be 7.1.2 to take this. However, if I remember correct, you always take the top kernels, it's, it's, it's a mandatory, it's by default, plus what you define. So imagine from a file of uh, thousands of lines, you do this command and you take these few lines. This is much less workload and it's much more uh, efficient if you know what to extract, of course, right? If you're suspicious that, oh, I expect that my wavefronts are not enough, I want to see them like that, you know? Something like that is the concept. Now, OmniPerf Analyze does age is about to see the help options, right? And here you can see the, you have options list kernels to see the, kern, the top 10 kernels, uh, to see the metrics for the uh, GFX uh, 90A and start a GUI. You can also print, you can also, I haven't used it so much, you can also say decimal and calls. And what's that? I go back. Like I say, do 7.12 and print uh, this column that's the average, or this column that's the max, and don't print anything else. So you can even handle uh, the CLI, handle the output format. Okay, so there's a lot of uh, stuff that uh, the team prepared. And here is the default, as I said, normalize. Normalize is per wave. You can do it, for example, per kernel. Okay. Now, easy things you can check. Are the, all the computer units being used? Because as you know, I mean, I know cases that you don't need to use all of them, okay? But usually if not use all of them, then don't expect that the GPU will outperform uh, at the best. Um, if are the vector registers are uh, of speed, then try smaller work group sizes. Um, is the code integral limited? Try reducing the integral operations usually in the index calculation. Um, so these are some first things about uh, when you use OmniPerf, you need to know your kernel, okay? You, I mean, you need to know, uh, yes. Uh, I mean, I, I saw recently kernels that it was like uh, hundreds of lines. That's, that's really more complicated. Uh, 
but you need to know what to expect, what's, what sounds normal, what doesn't sound normal, for example, uh, etc. Um, so when we do the Omniproof Analyze uh, of vCopy again with GUI, it will tell us in the output, please go to this IP, there will be a real number here, or localhost, localhost or IP, and this on 1850 port. And it will start the web page that this is a screenshot from the web page. And I, okay, so maybe it's now the time. And this is a memory chart and something else, but let me try, I think it's here. So I hope you see now a zoom of this stuff. Uh, of course, I lost my laser point. So um, this is for some people, it's, um, how to say, it's useful for some people it's too advanced, etc. So let's go to the, if I can say, it's not column, but the exec, the exec column is a bit up and the exceed active compute units 58 from 110. So this is the first sign, right? You see how much vector registers, scalar registers you use. Uh, you see some wavefronts. The RD is, means uh, 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 read, uh, read requests uh, uh, and uh, the WR is the right requests. So you see, you see from uh, how many requests go to LDS or to vector L1 CAS or to Scarlet L1 data CAS uh, or to instructions L1 CAS. And from there, you see how many go to L2 CAS. And from L2 CAS, how many go to the fabric. And fabric, I have to move, can be uh, go to HBM, go to another GPU, uh, or go to the network, right? And you can see um, some, uh, uh, yes, you can see L2CAS, uh, for example, uh, percentage of hit rates, 74%, right? Or, or latency to access uh, L2CAS for read or write requests, 400 something cycles, 240 cycles. So you can start seeing a lot of formation that they are overwhelming, 100% like overwhelming. Uh, but I will say something. If you see a lot of read write requests and you cannot explain them, uh, you can start thinking, I have to dig further to see what's going on, for example, right? And um, so you have the, the web fronts on the left, uh, web occupancy 14 per GCD. So we know that per GCD is maximum 40, okay? So we can have higher workload, probably. Uh, uh, you can see distraction dispatch, right? SLUS mem. For all of this, we don't have MFMA, is the matrix operations we don't have in this code. For example, um, the LDS, uh, I think this is the 30, 31, I think, request, something like that. Again, and here from, uh, uh, from L2 to L1, uh, down from L2 to L1, uh, instruction L1 cast, the request goes back to L1, for example. You see instructions L1 cast, 99%. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure why the lattice is, is not written here. Um, you can see in vector L1 cache, you can see stall 0%. That, that's good because something can be stalled for many reasons uh, in the reality, right? So basically, this, this, uh, this application is, is a toy code. Um, you can see also atomic operations if you have, and you know that the atomic operations uh, hurt a bit, and it's good to use some flags, etc. So just from this image, you can take a, a, an initial, you know, initial understanding of what happens to my memory. It's a lot. I know it's, it's not so straightforward, um, but uh, I give you an example. I don't, uh, I don't have this example. Uh, someone has a huge number of write and read in a really simple kernel, and uh, finally the registers, the registers were not used because he hadn't defined the restrict his uh, his arrays that he used to help the compiler, for example. Um, so, and let me see, I don't remember. And here, the speed of light that we saw before. So, speed of, yeah, so 0%. Now, what's the interesting with the 0% here? Uh, this is, um, uh, I don't have it here. Uh, when, when I did the roof line of this, what I saw, no data. Why? This is zero. The flops are zero. And the roof line starts plotting from, uh, 0 point, uh, 0.1 arithmetic intensity, something like that. And when I was not seeing uh, this, I was thinking, why? And when I, I printed the values, I said, yeah, it's, it's obvious why. And 
again, let me go to Zoom. So you can see here the instruction mix, right? How many branches uh, instructions per wave, right? VLU vector. So this is how you utilize SLU, scalar stuff. So the scalar stuff is, the, is basically uh, shared between the wavefronts to, do, to define uh, auto do based on some if conditions, etc. LDS, etc. And here you see it's basically integer 32, the most of operations. So you can define here, don't define, uh, visualize and see what are your operations to know exactly your code, what's uh, more influence on what uh, uh, data types, etc. So as you can see, it's a lot, a lot of stuff to, so OmniPerf is much easier to run. It, it takes more time basically, okay, that, that's the problem maybe, but the output is a lot of information. Um, now, let me see what's, uh, okay, I have this information here that um, if, to import the database to analyzing Grafana GUI, OmniPerf database import connection options, W, which uh, workload and start loading okay password receive oh this is a typo from the huh. okay this is a typo and you have to see this workload name uploaded complete i forgot to mention something don't use second time the same name here in your personal space it, it will fail i mean that there is a flag to force to override this is not defined by default on purpose don't override other data so you can you can make i don't know underscore one underscore two to not override the workload name okay um and here's the grafana but you see more fancy maybe and let me try also to zoom again here so uh, i don't know good the grafana because i don't use it so much and i will explain why this is the workload here uh, i have no uh, you see the workload and the name, the, the workload name, and you see the baseline workload, the second line. So you, you define baseline and the workload to see comp comparisons. Speed of light again, you can see the 0%, etc. But now you can see colors that's nice to identify with, with your eyes directly what's good, what's bad, depending or, 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 or really bad. But here is like heat rate 100%, for example, etc. And this is. Uh, Oops, good, one moment. Ah, that's all, okay. Uh, so that's why the Grafana is more fancy, but you need also, you can define here the baseline of GCD, etc. although it's not always uh, useful. Uh, yeah, that's all I think here. Um, but you need a server for the Grafana. Now, <laughs> Insights for an um, OmniPerf analyzer. Um, again, this is Grafana. Uh, what is that? This is two executions, baseline and current, to compare the system. I think uh, there is some difference here. Let me see. What is that? Row conversion. Row conversion is different. So you see here the 5.13, 5.20. So this is, has nice metadata to know where you run your, your baseline experiment before and track all of this information, right? Uh, so from this aspect, it's nice uh, to have some uh, Grafana information. Um, initial like, assessment with the kernel statistics, um, instruction data flow and speed of light, uh, memory chart already I saw in kernel statistics. And again, uh, you see the same stuff, uh, the memory chart, and the speed of light, and you see colors, what is 100%, uh, uh, etc. So it's more, more, let's say more fancy, I would say. Um, the roof line is the first step characterization of workload performance, is the most easy to understand, right? Um, so uh, we have slides to say what's roof line. Um, I will not try to explain here, but here's the arithmetic intensity, which is the flops per byte, which basically computation and moving of bytes. And here's the gigaflops. And there's some lines here that are, because I have slides to explain, I will not mention them now. And here's the various kernels, how many times are called, and the performance, maybe let me try to zoom again. Uh, the performance, okay, that's being bandwidth, total duration, uh, arithmetic intensity, 
Okay. Now, if you're wondering why, let me say this, um, why they have so many lines on, on the memory, is about to have HBM, okay, uh, L2, L1, and LDS. So the LDS is a local data center memory on compute unit, which is faster than other memories, but it's really small also, okay? Usually when you do the set uh, underscore shared, you go to the LDS, but you need to know what you're doing also. So, uh, background, what's the roofline? Uh, first question is that uh, we are only, yeah, we're only 40 minutes. Uh, uh, before I start, do you want any break? Is it a lot of information? Uh, you tell me. So I continue. I think it would be helpful if we could get a, everybody who is familiar with a roof line raise their hands. Uh, let's use the raise hand rather than the thumb. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have a fair number that are not familiar with roof lines. So we'll go in. Uh, okay. We'll go into more detail with that. Okay. okay. Is there a natural breaking point right after roof line? Yeah, it could be. I mean, yeah. Okay. okay. So these slides are made from a colleague and we integrated here because we found them quite uh, nice. So um, attainable flops per second, here as you see on the way axis, the flops per second, is measured empirically on the given device. Do you remember that I told you about the macro bands on only perf? It runs and measures empirically based on some macro benchmarks. I think it's the next slides. Uh, uh, to measure the, I mean, the ACP 8 times 6 plus Y and other, and other stuff. So, FLOP is floating point operation. FLOP comes from common operations. Addition is one FLOP, multiplication one FLOP, uh, other operations two FLOP. Uh, FLOPs per second is number floating operation performed per second. So, this is quite basic. So, sorry for that. Uh, um, this is a nice example. And uh, here you see the arithmetic intensity flows per byte, okay? So uh, our colleague said, let's say you have this example, okay? This formula, um, flops equal one, have one operation, and bytes uh, have one read, uh, uh, one write, um, and say 44 bytes equal eight. So the flops per byte here is one eighth, okay? For this one, this is, this is like, how it's calculated the flops per byte uh, for your kernels, okay? Um, and also, yes, this one is a log log plot to, to be more easy. Uh, it makes it to do the example later performance along more laws, etc. So you see here uh, the scaling is not like you know like the normal ones. It's log log, uh, so to be easier because otherwise it will be difficult to to read it. I would say. And here we are, um, here's the peak flops per second of your compute, and here's the memory, okay? And there's a point that they are connected, okay? Uh, and these are empirically measured values, and different SKUs will have unique plots, meaning I use GPU 0, GPU 5, can be different, but don't expect something extreme, right? If it's extreme, that's a problem for me. Uh, but uh, also don't expect to be same numbers exactly. Um, um, okay, I will have used a suite of simple kernels to empirically derive these values. These are not theoretical uh, values, okay, and indicate peak performance under unicorn conditions. And you know what we mean unicorn here is like marketing stuff. So here you will see the actual achievable performance. Uh, nothing more, nothing less. And of course, um, here, um, at the number of flops per second uh, is the minimum of the peak flops or the, uh, so the minimum, or, or it's here, for example, or somewhere here, I, I mean, if it's computer memory bound, or here in this place is uh, arithmetic intensity time peak of gigabytes per second. 
And the balance is when, uh, uh, okay, when arithmetic density is the peak flops uh, divided by peak gigabyte per second. So a typical machine balance is five to 10 flops per byte, uh, 40 to 80 flops per double to exploit compute capability. On MR to 50X, it's 16 flops per byte. Uh, to have a 120 flows per double to exploit compute capability. Uh, let's be honest, uh, <laughs> uh, you cannot change uh, always your algorithm to be like that. And, and this is quite strict, I would say. Um, what I mean is like, yes, it's nice, but um, uh, it can be a huge effort to achieve these numbers, right? Uh, so one, and I think it's a, uh, let's not talk because it's next slides, I suppose. Um, so uh, five performance regions for uh, our Taylor compute, okay? Uh, this, so, so let me, um, I will explain later, but it cannot be above the peak flops, right? If it's above peak flops, something is wrong, but we'll see something later. Uh, bandwidth, it cannot be above HPM. Uh, why, I'm, I'm, why I'm skeptical? It cannot be above HBM, but we have also Dell 2 L1 LDS, right? So it can be because of the other things. But you understand the main concept, I mean, it cannot be above HBM, but if it's L1, L2 LDS, it can be. Uh, compute bound. So we say kernel compute bound when it's quite closed here. Okay, something like that here. And we say bound is bound here. Okay. So we are happy when the kernels are closed here. Okay, for it's for memory, even inside, and for compute, even above if you use uh, 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 some uh, uh, matrix operations, etc. Now, poor performance is a rest. I mean, okay, I cannot say that if, if what is my point that I cannot say this is poor performance, right? I mean, it's it's close, it's close, but okay. Uh, but yes, if something is quite low, this is poor performance and needs to be improved. Um, so the final res result is a single roofline plot presenting the peak telemetry performance uh, in terms of flows per second on a given device and arithmetic intensity. Okay, uh, and we have an application independent way to, of measuring and comparing performance on any platform. And this is what the next one says. So imagine you run kernels, this is kernel A, B, C, D, A, T, L, H, and you know the flops per second. What's good performance? How we say that, oh, this is good, this is excellent. That's the highest flops per second. Um, we sort kernels by the arithmetic intensity. Down on the X axis is arithmetic intensity, it's the flops per byte. Okay, so now you see per arithmetic intensity. Now, compare performance relative to hardware capabilities. Okay, so now we we'll plot the lines, the peak flops, you see. And the kernels near the roof line are making good use of computational resources. Kernels can have low performance, but make use of bandwidth. Okay, these ones. But these ones, okay, these ones are Increase arithmetic intensity, uh, then uh, bandwidth is limited. So for this one, and kernels not near roofline should have optimization that can be made to get closer to roofline. So if I go back, uh, this flop per this flop per second, for example, is is above than this one, but this is memory bound, so the performance is considered okay, but this one is is poor, or this one. Is above this significant, but this is memory bound, but this is not, and it's quite, these two are quite poor, as you see. Uh, so, this is a way uh, to understand wh what is good compared to the hardware you have. Okay. Uh, okay. So, uh, okay, I would say here, make, okay, I will show you the next slide, but I will not talk. Because we are talking about this now, and let's make, I think, a, a small break for people to not to overload them. 